Are you ready for one more? All right. I know it's been a long day. It's been a long weekend. Once again, clench the butt cheeks together. It just works. It just, I'm telling you. Oh, it just refreshes you so nicely. All righty. Our final speaker is uh, Massimo Polidoro. His talk is called Gotcha, or How I Learned from the Amazing Randy to Fight the Fakers and Live My Dreams. Uh, he is the executive director and co-founder of Comitato Italiano per il Controllo del Paranormale. That's right. That took three and a half hours to learn. And the coolest thing is that he apprenticed with James Randy, so that's uh, where we're at. Uh, his haiku is one Italian, one diminutive Randy, a dream taught and learned. Please welcome your final speaker for Tam, uh, Massimo Polidoro. Thank you, thank you very much. It was uh, exactly 25 years ago that I, today, I mean, that I got a letter from James Randi, this is the original, uh, that would change my life. I had written to him congratulating on his work um, and asked him some information on my then pet subjects like, uh, you know, Houdini, magicians, paranormal, regaler. And he very kindly replied, and uh, we met a few months later when he came to Italy. Make a long story short, we got to know each other, and since Italy's prominent science journalist, um, Piero Angela, um, was trying to start an Italian version of PSYCOP, they uh, thought that I could be presented with an interesting proposal. Randy had been um, observing me for a couple of days in, in Rome, where we were at the time, and, uh, and then at the end of these two days together, Piero Angela and Randy called me and, and said, you know, Massimo, Randy has a proposal for you. Would you like to go to America, learn with James Randy how to investigate mysteries, um, you know, gather this experience, then bring it back to Italy in order to start the Italian version of, uh, of PSYCOP, which was going to be CICAP, provided that Piero Angela would uh, give me a grant in order to sustain myself in the United States. Tough question, huh? Well, I said yes, and so I became Randy's uh, apprentice, full-time apprentice in skepticism, probably the, the, the first one. And that's how I learned to fight uh, the fakers. As I said, uh, it has been 25 years, and I've seen things that uh, you people wouldn't believe. Um, I could, you know, attack ships on fire off the, no, not that kind. But I've had the chance to meet and to uh, test and investigate dozens of people that really thought that they possessed some kind of paranormal um, phenomenon, from paranormal power. Of these, the fakers were actually a small percentage, but they were quite loud. The majority were just naive people, like, for example, uh, this man, the magnetic man, uh, he thought he was a magnetic. He, he just put his cutlery set on his chest and he didn't fall down. So he went on television explaining how he, uh, this magnetic powers made him so, so powerful, apparently. And so they asked me to test his powers. And as you can understand very easily, you don't need a degree in physics to test this claim. Because the simple test that I suggested was, could you just please bend over a little bit? And what happened is quite you know, clear. Everything fell on the floor, and it was a shame. And I said, no, I was an unbeliever, of course. But you know, just by watching him, you know, this slope going down gives away the explanation. In other cases, self-proclaimed psychics just deluded me. They uh, one day decide that they have some special ability, and there's nothing that can shake that belief. Uh, for example, there was this lady. No, I'm not looking where you think I am. No? She thought that she could guess the identity of cards without looking at them. So she would pass her hand on the back of a card and say, King of Hearts. No, it's a three of diamonds. Yeah, but it was red, you see? Very good. Jack of Spades. No, Queen of Clubs. Yeah, but it was a figure and, and so on. 
Uh, the same for another lady who said she, was, she, she had x-ray eyes and she could see inside boxes. Uh, but what she said was, you know, like, I see a shiny object uh, with a smooth surface. We open it up and there is an orange. I said, see, I got it. Yeah, but it would have been true for a pen, uh, a shoe, or whatever you want. So she was very vague and never tested properly. But as I said, even if they are not the majority, the fakers are the loudest. I'm not sure if you can call these people 100% uh, dishonest. Some undoubtedly are deep inside. Uh, but many may just have found that sometimes seemingly strange things happen when they are around. And so they get an aura for being special. Uh, or better, what actually happens is that uh, they found some situations in which pretty mundane events uh, can be transformed into apparent miracles and then take advantage for them. A typical example is when a psychic appears on television and pretends to project his powers through the TV screen. Ever heard of that? Of course you have. Well, years ago, when my apprenticeship with Randy had just uh, started, he was working on a TV show titled Exploring Psychic Powers Live from Los Angeles, and Yuri Geller was going to appear on the same show. Uh, he claimed that he was going to perform something incredible, never seen before, uh, that would make, that would, ch that could change Randy's mind about his powers, maybe. And since Randy imagined very well what was going to happen, he came to me and said, uh, we were leaving in secrecy. I said, where do we go? Arizona. Like, well, yeah, Phoenix. Oh, wow, I've never been there. Um, how long do we stay? Two hours. <laughs> what? Yeah, I need you to be a psychic for a radio show. Don't worry, let's go. I didn't know what to expect, but there was nothing that you could do. So, yeah, I just came from Italy, and if he wants me to be a psychic, I'll be a psychic. So that evening in Los Angeles, Uri Geller made his usual uh, presentation, nothing new, unfortunately. So people called in to report the strange things were happening in, in in their houses, right? And so the host of the show, the late Bill Bixby, asked Randy what he thought about this. And this is what happened. All right, All right gentlemen, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm afraid we are running out of time. Now we've heard what the callers had to say, those that could get through to us, it seems incredible to me. Now Randy, what do you have to say? So this is the astounding feat that Mr. Geller offers as proof of his wonderful psychic powers. Last Saturday morning, listeners to Phoenix radio station KSLX retreated to a similar performance by psychic Massimo Polidoro from Milan, Italy. Mr. Polidoro told the audience, as Mr. Geller did tonight, that wondrous things would occur in their homes as he put forth supernatural vibrations. Let's listen to some brief reports by the amazed listeners who called in. We've got uh, Massimo Polidoro from Milan, Italy. He is a kinetic psychic, and uh, let's go to the phone. Hi, KSLX. Hello, uh, my name's Bob. My cat, it's crying at the, at the radio right now, standing with its hair on edge. I've never seen behavior like this in my life. Hi, Cass Alexa, uh, is something strange happening at your house? Hi, this, this may really sound silly, but I, I have a clock my mom gave me. It's an antique clock. It hadn't worked when she gave it to me, but it's a family clock, and, and it's it started ticking. I mean, it's making yes. that tick-tock noise back and forth. Hi, Cass Alex, anything weird going on where you are? Yeah, I'm at work, and we're reprocessing artificial kidneys, and the reprocessing machine started backing up foam out of the sink. Tammy's on the phone live with us right now. Okay, I walked out into my kitchen. I have a clock that's battery-operated, and when I looked up at the clock, it said 8 o'clock, and it's still ticking, and it was on time before. And you just went in there just, like, recently? Yeah. Because right, right now it's 8.23. Well, the only problem here is that Mr. Polidoro is a colleague of mine who has as much psychic power as a piece of shirt cardboard. Over a period of only 30 minutes, reacting to suggestions that any anomaly at all would be due to psychic influence, listeners to that station called in and reported things that they ordinarily would not have even noticed. We th thank the folks at KSLX for proving our point for us, and I rest my case. In 1988, the Iron Curtain is still up, and it appears that in Russia, powerful psychics are being you know, tested in order to transform them into paranormal spies. A science fiction scenario that when the Berlin Wall uh, collapsed and Randy and I watched in amazement on TV, uh, that unexpected and welcome 
uh, development turned out to be just that, a fantasy. However, many Russian psychics are still considered to be very powerful and have grown like a legendary status. One of these is Ala Vinogradova, a woman who claimed she could move objects with the power of her mind, and uh, we can see her in action here. You see, she's moving like a cigar case uh, holder uh, made of aluminum without touching, and this is a piece of a pencil, I guess, on a, on a glass table. So Randy was going to do uh, a TV show in Russia uh, for Nova, Explore, um, Secrets of the Psychic, was titled. And Vinogradova was asked to be tested, but um, she refused to be in the presence of Randy. And so the crew went and filmed her perf performing her, her feet alone. Uh, however, this film was not used in the, in, the, in the program, and Randy probably didn't even look at it for, for a while. So what happened is that one day I, I was um, going through his tapes, and I asked about the mysterious box that said uh, unused footage Nova. He didn't remember about it, and so we watched it together. And at one point, we both jumped on our seat because we saw something that probably could explain the mystery. And let's see if you can spot it too. You see anything weird going on? Yeah? What? What? Underneath, exactly. If you watch it again, you will see that below the table there is a, a, a loose thread. And you see it moves when she, when she passes close to, with her hand, with the object. It just jumps. So this gave us an idea that maybe there was static electricity involved in this. And many times when you want to find out about a mystery and you have a, a hypothesis or something, a good idea is to put yourself in the same condition as the phenomenon and, and then see what happens. So what we, do, what we did was the, uh, to find a plexiglass plate, because this is plexiglass, it's not glass. Uh, a plexiglass is like a plastic material that can be charged um, electrostatically very easily and then put some light objects on it. As soon as we tried to do it, the objects would just fly all over the, the table. Without, well, impressive, the most uh, close thing to uh, psychokinesis that you could find. So she had been performing this for 40 years, and we are not saying that she was uh, um, lying or she was a fake, but maybe in 40 years a hint of what is really taking place, you would guess that she would have it, but no, she was still performing it as a genuine psychic phenomenon. Yeah. However, there have been occasions where the fakery was quite evident, and there are no possible excuses or alternative explanations for when it happens, like it did when, uh, when the mini gathers were around, if you can uh, remember those kids that presented power similar to the, uh, their hero. And there was a specific girl in Spain who claimed that she could bend the metal, uh, see through uh, closed boxes, um, and she was once tested on Italian television, and I was asked to explain what was taking place. This is the, the actual uh, clip. And she's talking in Spanish because she's Spanish, and she has a, a box there with some colored paper. 
chiaroveggenza. Sure, she, this is a clairvoyance uh, experiment. Mm -hmm. sì. The tester, allora, this TV presenter, colori. as you can see, very, very Dimesco, careful parte sono choosing a piece of color paper right in front of her, very Se scientific, and, and then put it in, on, in the box. Now, she would take the box, of course, okay. and concentrate on it. The only thing is that in order to foster her psychic powers, she needed some, some boost and so she asked for some music. And you all know that Michael Jackson is a, a great inducer of psychic phenomena. So she said grey, and when the box was open, of course, Correct. There it was, it was great. Fantastic. So again, as I said, what you do in such situations is try to, to put yourself in the same conditions. And so I had a box very similar to the one that she had built. I don't want to be performing now, but just to show you. Uh, could you please join me for a second? Yeah. Okay. I want to see yeah, you want to show it. Done? Done? Okay. Oops. So, do we have uh, it's, in, oh, it's inside. Do we have any Michael Jacks? No. <laughs> um, she would, you know, hold the box it like this, concentrate, pass her hand whatever it was, I don't need to perform the thing as if it was real because I know it is yellow inside. <laughs> yes, this. Uh, how do you do it? I'll tell you in a second. When the color is inside the box, and you will see it, in, I will show it to you. Um, this is the simple thing you need to do. Just with your thumbs, well, you cannot see it because you're very far, but with your thumbs, you just raise one angle here, you can see, and below this, you see exactly what, but from the front, yeah, just takes a second, just look, you see, and it's done. Thank you. As you can easily understand, there is no need to be um, a fraud to perform in perfect good faith some of these feats, not these. Uh, and believe they have a paranormal origin. But certainly deception and self-deception can, can help. A couple of years ago, and I was just reminded of this episode um, the very first day here at TAM um, about a test we performed and I, and I thought that maybe it was interesting to go into it a little bit. A couple of years ago, National Geographic Channel asked me if I was interested in testing a sort of a Jedi Knight warrior. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, could do amazing thing with these strange powers. Um, of course, I would be interested, even if that meant being knocked out by a karate master as they presented the thing to me. Luckily, the strike would not come as a, you know, with <clears throat> through brute muscle force, but through chi, the elusive uh, natural energy of universe, as believers call it. So I asked my friend and colleague, with whom I do many investigations, Dr. Luigi Garlaskelli, uh, to take part in the test. So he was going to be uh, the victim of the test. I was to be the observer. You, know, you need both parts in it, and uh, somebody has to do the dirty job. <laughs> Here you can see what happened. You, you saw a, bit, a little bit of this uh, uh, the other day, but it's interesting to watch it. Milan, home to Italy's stock market and business centers, and its fashion and shopping capital. It's also home to two of the world's most famous skeptics, chemist Luigi Garlaschelli and psychologist Massimo Polidoro. Massimo writes prolifically on all kinds of supernatural phenomena. Luigi is the hands-on type. He'll subject himself to almost anything to make a skeptical point. I think it is important for scientists to investigate strange claims because it is the job of science to discover what still is unknown and, uh, and, and it is what scientists do all the time. 
Now it's time for Massimo and Luigi to turn their attention to the most hair-raising use of mystical energies we've seen so far. Throwing chi to knock someone out without even touching them. Massimo reviewed the tapes of George Dillman and his followers performing such no-touch knockouts and was not impressed. The people go in there expected what was going to happen and they were expected to react in a specific way. And they just reacted to the suggestion when this happens in, in hypnotism demonstrations on stage by a magician which doesn't use hypnosis at all just give suggestions and people who is ready to believe that kind of things react. But critiquing a tape and standing up to a karate master are completely different matters. It's time for a showdown. In one corner, weighing in Whoa. at no more than 125 pounds, is chemist Luigi Garnaschelli. He thinks he can stand up to a knockout punch of chi because it doesn't exist. In the other corner, it's 8th degree black belt Leon J, one of George Dillman's top associates and fellow practitioner of the no-touch knockout. This ought to be interesting. In fact, when we did the test on Luigi, who was not uh, ready to, to believe these things, or maybe it was just staying there, seeing what would happen. It didn't work. No, we stayed there, you know, 40 minutes, every, every possible position and grimace, nothing happened. But, you know, but what is very interesting is the reaction of uh, Dillman after the, this failure of his, uh, of his pupil. Dillman thinks he knows what went wrong and has come up with a very interesting explanation. The skeptic was a, was a, a totally non-believer. Non-believer plus, I don't know, I should say that on film, but if the guy had his tongue in the wrong position of the mouth, yeah. uh, that can also nullify it. Yeah, you can nullify yeah. it. You can nullify a lot of things done to you. In fact, you can nullify it when you raise those two big toes. If I say I'm going to knock you out, and you raise one toe and push one toe down, can't knock you out. And then if I go to try again, you reverse it. If you keep doing this, I won't knock you out. Good to know. So what's the use? <laughs> So what you see here are just a few examples of the many uh, strange uh, people and, and cases that have a chance to investigate. But nothing would have been possible without the priceless personal tutoring that I had from Randy. However, it was not just my personal uh, Yoda that I had found. From the start, Randy uh, had really been like a, a second father to me. Uh, he taught from example. Um, he did not give long lessons, although he has uh, anecdotes and uh, uh, stories on practically anything, as you all know. And they are fascinating, and you learn so much just in one day with Randy. You can imagine spending months and years. It's f fantastic. So instead, I learned by watching him act and behave and by helping him every day in his researches and investigations. Among the many things that I learned from Randy, uh, probably one of the most resonant was the importance of self-confidence. Uh, if you don't believe in yourself, probably nobody else will. And I was not satisfied by simply, let's say, being um, an investigator of mystery, becoming an investigator of mystery. I also wanted to become a writer. Uh, I'd always like to invent stories. Um, I, I, draw comics for when I was a kid. I, I even wrote and published a uh, fanzine devoted to the Beatles and, uh, and many interests. This is, by the way, Randy's old library. Now it's a, a new fantastic place. So uh, I thought you had to be older, more experienced, and uh, um, far more educated than I was at the time to write books. 
Uh, but uh, Randy uh, said, you know that I dropped out of school? Yes, uh, was, was his observation to my self-deprecating comment. Yeah, I know, but you were a child prodigy. So I had to learn to write like anybody else. So, and you can do it too. Just choose a subject that fascinates you, that really engages you, and try to learn everything you can about it. And you will see that afterwards, writing about it will become a necessity. And he was right, of course. He had a strong fascination for spiritualism at the time. And being in the country where spiritualism was born in 1848 uh, was a great chance for me to learn and investigate and research on, on this subject. So I diverged, uh, it, I dived into Randy's uh, books and files on the subject, and then I went to uh, Fort Lauderdale's public library to, to ask for more rare books. It was, of course, internet was, had not been invented by then, so you had to, to do it the old way. And quickly I began to amass such an, a quantity of, of information on spiritualism that I, I had to write it down. And I wanted, if, you want, if I wanted to see some order in it, don't make it too complicated, uh, said Rand. Imagine that you're just writing for your grandmother and everything will be fine. And that's how my very first book um, came about. It was this history of spiritualism that came out in 1995. And uh, it would be followed in the next uh, 18 years by 32 more books. Uh, thanks to Randy's encouragement, yes. Thanks to Randy, I was able to merge my passions for uh, mystery detection and writing and turn them into my profession. So it is a, a great privilege for me to be here today at this incredible convention, exactly 25 years since meeting Randy. And uh, Randy, if you are, yes, you are backstage here and you can hear me. Uh, you have been a light and an example for uh, many people, some of which are here today, but there are legions out there and I want to take this occasion in front of our friends to tell you how grateful I am that you made it all possible for me to follow and fulfill my dreams. And I know you know it, Randy, but uh, I will thank you forever for changing my life. Thank you, Randy, and thank you all. Thank you, Massimo. Massimo Polidoro.